This video is about heroes that are good in early game but falls off in late game. So the first hero we're gonna talk about is no other than Themis. So if you see the advertisement that the game give you for Themis in the beginning of the game, she's really good. When she kills an enemy, she's gonna cast her ultimate again and that's gonna chain kill infinitely and win you the game single-handedly. And in early game, since the enemies are slower and doesn't have much defense, it's actually very easy for Themis to accomplish the chain killing effect. And yeah, that makes her really good in early game. But in late game, the enemies are harder to kill. Not only they are having more health and defense, there's also, especially in PvP, there are things like Holy Shield, and the blessing from Therafina, as well as some like Monarch synergy, make preventing Themis from getting her kill in the first place. So that would mean that she can't start the chain kill effect. And if she can't kill an enemy, she's just a really bad hero. And she's actually below average if she can't kill an enemy. So as you, if you can know that, like Corolla, Corolla's damage is higher than Themis and Corolla is really bad so yeah her damage is 8, 4, 3 and Themis if she cannot like kill any enemies with their with her ultimate like she's a really bad hero and another thing is she's really slow because she only have 99 speed and if you have her skin it's only gonna do plus 5 and it's slower than most late game heroes. So yeah, Themis is good early game. If you have her, she can help you a lot, but don't invest in her further, like all the way to 13 star, 12 star, like I did. Uh, don't do that. Just get her to maybe like a star and then you can stop and start investing in the heroes that are more beneficial in late game. And yeah, that's for the Themis. So the second hero we're gonna talk about is Gwyn. Yeah. So I I use Gwyn a lot in my early game, but I'm not sure whether Gwyn is good in early game or like is it just because there are no better option. So it turns out that Gwyn is actually really good in early game because I got one copy of him in like random summon at my free to play account. So he's really good for this ability. When an ally is attacked, Gwyn apply one stack of attack boost to the ally team. So your home team gain one stack of attack boost. And so this alone isn't that good because the attack boosts only stack up to 5 times by default. But in your Glorian team, you usually also have another hero, Lilian Lilla. So she can increase the limit of attack boost by 10. So now your attack boost stack up to 15 times. And your Gwen can grant your team 15 stack of attack boost. So... That's a lot of damage, like it's 75% attack if I'm calculating correctly. And yeah, and you also need attack boost in for some other heroes like Talanus. In order for Talanus to stun, you need 12 stack of attack boost. Yeah, so we'll talk about Talanus later. Now, why did Gwyn fall off in late game? It's because of Tome of Trade. So in late game, you don't need Gwyn anymore because this synergy. So in Tome of Trade, and you go to Glorian, and you will find that... Okay, it's right here. So each time an ally receives a buff, it has a 50% chance to gain additional 3 stack of attack boost. So in late game, you will have this, you will have this node upgraded, so that each time you receive buff, you has a chance to gain three stack of attack boost. And if you 
go to a Glorian team. So let's build a Glorian team real quick. So in Glorian team, you will uh, not just Glorian team, but like all sorts of other team, you can get attack boost really fast because in late game there's a lot of different various buffs so let me just build a glory team real quick so we have lena and lila and we're not gonna have gwen in it so let's see yeah let's go to the glory team and click on the info so yeah at the start of combat your team is getting so many buffs and all the buffs triggers the glory and synergy effect uh, the glory and tome of trade effect and your team is already at like 11 stack of attack boost so yeah this is attack boost and my navi is at 11 stacks so yeah so you don't need gwen to gain a lot of attack boost Okay, so this is why I say Gwyn for... Wait, did I lose one game? Okay, I don't know. Whatever, we'll worry about that later. Yeah, so Gwyn will fall off in late game. And the next heroes, I'm going to talk to about two of them together. They are Marina and Talandas. So they are similar. So... Marina can has a fifty percent chance. Her ultimate has a fifty percent chance to apply stun on all enemies for one round. If your team ha if Marina has three stack of attack boost, and if she has six stack, she will the chance will uh the duration will increase to two rounds. And for Talanus is sim is the same. But the requirement is higher, so she required 12 stack of attack boost to stun for two rounds. But the chance of applying stun is 100%. So if you can give Talanus 12 stack of attack boost, she will apply stun to all enemies. And yeah, this is really good in early game because they can, especially in PvP, because in PvP, Especially in PvE, because like the enemies have really high damage. So because you are usually pushing over the limit of what you can do, and enemies will have higher attack, and stopping them from taking action for two rounds is really good. In PvP, not so much, because in PvP, there's also a lot of Glorians, so they are immune to stun. So yeah, the Glorian synergy, they are control immunity. So you can't stun other Glorians. And yeah, the only way to counter Glorian is also Glorian. And yeah, so why do they fall off in late game? It's not be just because in late game there are more Glorians. First, it's because in late game you have a lot of better options in the Glorian synergy, such as uh, Gloria and uh, Ariana and the new new hero was at hand but another thing is as you progress through the game the the enemies will have higher speed and if their speed is higher than 103 then you will face with a problem where they already took action and they already cast their ultimate before talent has stunned them so Effectively, you only stun them for one round. And another thing is, if the in PV, so I'm talking about PVP when I say like the enemies will be faster than Talendus. In PVE, you will face with issues that the enemy teams will have Lachesis. So Lachesis, she can like remove all buffs from your team. And that will make your Talanus unable to stun the enemies. So, and you will stuck on the stage with Talanus. So if you are running the early and Lila and Gwen and Talanus combo in early game, this is a really good combo because like Gwen will provide 
enough attack boost and Lila Lila will increase the stack limit and Talanus when having enough attack boost will stun enemies for two rounds. And also another thing is Talanus will give enemies defense reduction when your team is attacked. So just like when but Talanus is for defense reduction. And defense reduction also stack up to five times by default. But if you have Lila Lila, you can in also increase the limit of defense reduction apply on enemy teams. So yeah. So back to what I was saying. So Talanus, if you play the this combo, you will stack on the stages where enemy has Lachesis. Okay, the next two heroes they are Katrina as well as Makaria. So I'm gonna talk about both of them together because they are not similar, but they are they are good in early game for the same reason, and they're bad in late game for the same reason. It's because of shields. So when Makaria is deployed, increase the shield effect of all allies by 50%. And this is really good. Although Makaria doesn't have shield ability herself, you can combo her with the with Lila and Lila and she also has the royal synergy and this synergy will grant your team like shield equal to like 100% of their own attack if you only have Makaria and at 5 piece your team get 200% attack shield and this is really good and Makaria will increase this further and this will increase your team's survivability by a lot and Katrina's ability is that whenever your team lands a critical hit, you will she will grant shield equal to fifty percent of her attack to all allies for two rounds. So these two abilities, the reason they are not that great in late game is because in late game the damage is so explosive that your shield kind of doesn't matter, and Another thing is, some enemies, some people, even have the ability to ignore shield. So if the enemy team has Seraphina and have her exclusive room activated, like once your the total number of buffs on Allah exceeds thirty, this is so easy. Like you you saw the buffs list I showed you when I was talking about Gwen. So 30 buff is so easy. Basically, the en if the enemy team has Seraphina with exclusive room, they will ignore shield. And even if they don't have Seraphina, the ascension level also grant them like shield devour. So like shield devour by 25%, 25%, 25%. So like, I think you can look at it in some places. Yeah, shield devour 20%. So stats increase hero's damage to shield. Higher stat increase like bonus with certain range. So the bonus damage enemies deal to shield is already like 200%. So shield in late game, they are not as impactful. So that's why like these two heroes, they fall off in late game. Okay, for the heroes that I mentioned in this video, they are really good in early game, but they will fall off in late game. So it's fine to use them as a like transition unit from early game to mid game to late game. But don't get, get baited into investing them to all the way to 12 star. There are better options. So yeah, that's it for this video and thanks for watching.